Pan. Left, centre, right. It sounds easy, doesn't it? But it's also surprisingly easy to get it wrong. And today I have two examples from commercial releases that clearly demonstrate pan issues. Learn audio online with Audio Masterclass. AudioMasterclass.com As you know, classical music is written mostly for acoustic instruments and acoustic instruments are recorded through microphones. Ideally, the positions of the instruments in a recording are the same as they were in the session. So violins on the left, cellos and basses on the right. For instance, this is easy to achieve. Use a coincident crossed pair of microphones, one pointing left, one pointing right. That will capture a very accurate stereo image. Spot mics and instruments, or groups of instruments, can be panned so they match up. So what can go wrong? Here's a clip from a recent recording by Stephen Isselis and Connie Shee of the Cello Sonata No. 1 by Camille Sanson. I'll put links to the full videos down in the description. I hear the cello a little to the left of centre. Why isn't it dead centre? Well, this album is titled Music from Proust's Salons. A real-life salon back in the day might look like this. The soloist is on the left, so that's OK. But listen again and concentrate on the piano. What a real-world listener would hear is the sound coming generally from the position of the piano, with perhaps the low notes extending towards the right because of the length of the strings. But here, can you hear how the notes come from different directions, not always linked to the pitch of the note? I hear the notes dancing around the stereo image like pixies at their midsummer ball. And sometimes a bunch of high notes will chime in from over on the right. This is what happens if you put microphones inside the piano. It's not right, but the performances are excellent, so I'll enjoy it as a bit of extra fun. Now, another example. This is viola player Hioli Tagawa from the album Songs of Solitude, clearly inspired by the Covid lockdown. It isn't the best sound you've ever heard, but I'm guessing it's a home recording made in a small room. Small rooms can be difficult to get a good sound in, and often you have to place the microphone closer to the instrument than you normally would, so that you can exclude some of the small room ambience that doesn't sound good. What I hear in this, as well as the rather intrusive breath noise at the start, is that the viola seems to be at least half as wide as the room. Each note almost seems to have its own position in the stereo image. Not even the player would hear the instrument like this. I have a viola. That's how I know. I have to say that the pan in this recording is completely wrong. There's no way a viola would be heard like this in real life. But there's another interesting example of pan in this album. This is Hioli Tagawa playing Perfect Time for a Spring Cleaning by John Powell, a piece specially composed for her under lockdown.
As you can hear, it's multi-tracked, and there are nine separate parts. For music of this complexity, panning is essential to make musical sense. It isn't intended to sound like a concert performance. Although, if nine violists get together to perform it, I'll be at the front of the queue for tickets. This is an example of panning done creatively, and actually, I might take a leap of imagination and wonder what the bark we heard earlier would sound like if it were multi-tracked, one track for each string. So there we have it. Clearly, we have pans that are literally all over the place, and technically, that's bad audio. But you know, I see these recordings as fun. And heaven knows, until we get out of this damned COVID-19, we need all the fun we can get. I'm David Meller, Course Director of Audio Masterclass. Thank you for listening.